Hello and five, right? For the wide? The one by the TV. Six. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Got there. <laughs> Hi. Welcome. Welcome to TTSF, where we have mixed up our uh, mixed up our studio a little bit. But we're going to be bringing you some very delicious and healthy. Well, it's probably pretty healthy, but not the healthiest thing in the world, but it's very good. <laughs> I mean, that's the most important thing to me. Yeah. Is it's it the tasty? tastiness I of it. I definitely taste test a lot of stuff. Uh, and like make it multiple times and figure out how I can improve it before mm -hmm. I take it here uh, Which usually involves like several iterat iterations of like what if I add more liquid? What if I cook it hotter? What if I cook it slower? What if I cook it in the oven? What if I don't right uh, before I arrive at something? Um, and I know somebody somebody on Twitter was like hey, can you do beef Wellington? And I'm like no that is beyond the capabilities of our cooking setup. Yeah, we've got an induction plate Yes, but it's good because it's like only things that you can make on one burner. Well, this is like, our setup is like akin to what I would be able to do at home. Like I have a full stove and all that kind of jazz, but in terms of cooking capabilities, it is it is what I would be able to do at home. So that's why I appreciate this kind of setup for something like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm a fan. So first I'm gonna start the induction cooker going because I want to saute some sausages. What are we making today? Oh, right, we're making sausage soup, which sounds gross, but it's really good and it's cheap. Uh, so that's a great thing to do. So first you're going to start by you're going to go to your grocery store and you're going to find some nice sausages to put in it. Not breakfast sausages. Mm -hmm. These, if you can read the label, are roasted red pepper and Asiago sausages. This package was $4.20 and I looked at it and said, hey, well, wow, <laughs> hey, yeah, hey. That's the weed number. Yeah, perfect. So Do you know actually yesterday it was 60, it was, it was 69 days until weed is legal in nice. <laughs> in Canada. So, so as you can see, this is a great food tea when you are stoned and or hungry. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, so first we're going to get our cooker ready and we're going to warm it up and we're going to put a little bit of olive oil in there when it gets up to temperature and we're going to put our sausages in and we're going to cook them so they're brown on two sides. I don't mean cook all the way through, I just mean cook them for a little bit so they, so, uh, they release their delicious juices and are have a nice texture and there's some caramelized stuff on the bottom of the pan so we've got to add a bunch of vegetables so what i have here is i have some bell pepper an onion some garlic uh -huh. <laughs> some mushrooms and a can of tomatoes uh-huh <laughs> Uh, Before the stream started, I would be very, very sly about doing that, and Corey didn't believe me, and I think she was right not to. Uh, but anyhow, so we, we just I, held I, it I must in. say that Ben may not have helped. No, no, no I broke, I, I broke <laughs> down like right away. So, but I've got zucchini, bell pepper, onion, garlic, mushrooms, can of tomatoes, and half a bouillon cube ah. and some Italian seasoning. Because uh, I'm not going to be adding any salt to this recipe because the tomatoes have salt in them, the sausages have salt in them. Uh, but you might want to add a little salt, which is what the bouillon cube is for, which because it's kind of like salt plus. Well, you taught me like the power of the bouillon cube the bouillon last cube time is we important did a cooking stream like this. Because it adds salt and other flavors. Yeah, I never I never used them really before. Nice. And now it's just like a staple for things like a, a yakadon. Yeah, it, just, like that. it, it, uh, it uh, is a good way to dial up the flavor. So first, let us start working on onion and garlic. And I'm going to get Ben to it is the knife uh i'm actually gonna put you in charge of sausages ah okay uh how much garlic do you like uh i'm a pretty garlic fan you're pretty a very garlic you man. like your you like your garlic garlicky i do i do i always keep like that that's Thanks. usually one of like the, the the first big things that i'll go and get for um like to fill up a, a, a new fridge whenever i move into a place or something like that it's just a bunch of garlic yeah yeah excellent uh, right. Typically, I just go with like the the minced stuff. It's kind of my favorite to go with. Just oh, it's easy. just because it's already prepared. Yeah, yeah. I did that with ginger, and I found it was less pungent overall. Definitely. Uh, you can also, if you're lazy about garlic, you can track down elephant garlic, which is one you can just put in one huge clove of garlic. Mm -hmm. uh, the problem with elephant garlic, though, is that uh, it's not as powerful. So. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for a lot of garlic, you have to do a lot of chopping all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I assume you just want me to take the cloves out. Yes. Yeah, I want like three cloves. Okay, well. How, how big do you I'm, like your onions? Because this uh, is a I'm, soup. I'm actually super easy. Like, I mean, I, I prefer them larger. But oh, perfect. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm totally fine. A rustic with, like, approach. Yeah, I mean, 
like I really really enjoy it. like I'm the kind of person that'll just eat like a raw onion kind of a thing not like like an apple or anything like that but like if you have a, some some chopped onions and stuff like that I'll you like onion on your bowl. burger yeah or onion in your salad mm -hmm. yeah I do too so great so if you're not like me and Ben maybe add half an onion and if you are like me and Ben let's have some delicious onion that are yeah. go that's going into our soup it all in although I've seen a lot of like that's just kind of a thing that some people do is just like crunch Oops. on a whole onion goodbye onion that's kind of their way to go. I will get that later. <laughs> All right. Now I need to put you in charge of sausages. That's feeling pretty warm. I will be the sausage man. We can go to the sausage cam. Sausage cam, go! <laughs> I'm not giving Corey it's, hard time. It's, it's the, we, have a, we have another over Hey, angle. sausage cam! All right, my, I, my oil's nice and hot. Ben, I want mm -hmm. you to puncture that and put some sausages in. You can just sort of drop them in. That is in fact starting to smoke, so that's getting turned down. Okay. Alright. Gonna get these bad boys out. This is not the ripest zucchini I've ever encountered. Mm -hmm. Oh baby. Just like so. That's perfect. All right. Now I'm gonna put the lid back on because mm -hmm. I don't want to get grease in my in my kitchen. <laughs> All so right. we're gonna let the sausages cook for a couple of minutes, and Ben has to leave to wash his hands. I do. Me. Yes. Thank you, Corey. <laughs> it's Never touch raw meat. Never touch raw meat, and then touch a vegetable, you will get food poisoning. Then you will be very sad as you poop your butt out a lot. Um, in fact, this recipe is set up and designed to give you an optimal workflow for chopping because you are chopping vegetables while your sausages are cooking, and then by the time your sausages are done, or at least by the time they're mo, then you chop the sausage last, which is nice. Can I, oh, can we see what sausages they are? These are Asiago and roasted red pepper sausages because I can get them at my local grocery store and I think they are quite delicious. You do not have to add sausages that taste like that. You can add mild Italian. You could add chicken and feta. You could do kale and oregano, like whatever. Like sausage that appeals to you, sausage that's on sale. Like both of those are good options. The one thing we don't have, tongs. Mm. That's okay. I really, we don't need the tongs all that much. Do we have tongs in the office? I don't think so. Hmm. I can double check. Uh, I looked for them already. Oh, okay, all right then. Which is why I was doing that fork trick. So while Ben was away, I chopped our zucchini. There's a lot of zucchini, but there's a lot of everything in here. Delicious. Mm -hmm. And now, Ben, I'm going to yeah. leave you in charge of chopping our mushrooms. Okay. So chop the mushrooms, and then chop the bell pepper, and throw them in there. Sounds good. How do you prefer them, like, done, like... Uh, here, can I show you? Yeah, I think show the easiest your, way to chop a mushroom. Technique. That's the best way? Uh, it's not the prettiest way, but you know what that is? Hmm. The fastest, easiest way to chop a mushroom. Cool. Wasn't sure if they needed to be in a specific if shape. If you want to put them in slices so they look nice on pizza, more power to you. But I'm lazy and I don't care what they look like. They just taste good, which is why I chop them up. This room smells so good. Yeah, these Check. sausages are awesome, Corey. <laughs> They're gonna be tasty. Get out of there. <laughs> These are suboptimal cooking tools, but... Can I all describe the wafting sense? It smells like, uh... I guess best way to describe would be cooking pork. <laughs> See, the problem being I've got to pierce the skin at an upward angle. Yeah. To get them out safely. 
<laughs> more descriptive. Uh, I mean, I'm trying to think, like, you know when you go to the farmer's market and they've got, like, a place that's actually, like, doing, like, like the cooking and stuff like that? It just, mm -hmm. there's a whole bunch of different aromas sort of going in from it. But, I mean, a big, a big part of the smell definitely is, like, the oil. Mm, yes. So... So as you can see here, I've got some raw sausages that I'm going to leave the hell alone because uh, I don't. Well, ripping pieces raw ripping mushroom. Pieces, my I'm sure our I'm sure our floor is filthy. Probably. Yeah, all over. All right. Mushroom cutting. This is great. I love having an assistant. <laughs> I mean... Someday, Penelope will do this job. Yeah. If she wants to. I, God, I hope she wants to, though. Nah, my mom tried that. Didn't didn't take. Mm. Yeah. All right. Now, same way. all of these can go in here. No, I turned you off. <laughs> but I, I know, wanted to cook. I know you feel that you have a pot on you. I just don't <laughs> want our oil to burn too badly. While well, we're cooking up our last item, which is a... Or chopping up our last item. Just a bell pepper. And you notice I'm chopping up the... I'm not chopping up the garlic. Why aren't you doing the garlic, Kathleen? Don't you always do onion and garlic together? No. Don't add garlic when you add your onion. Add your garlic later. It'll burn easier. It's more delicate. So, uh, what I'm actually going to do is uh, start the food sautéing and then put Ben in charge of it. And then I'll chop up the garlic. Okay. Show you guys some garlic choppy techniques. I think this part of the bell pepper is totally fine. It just grosses me out because it has a texture like styrofoam. Yeah, definitely. I hate eating it. I, I try and cut it off often when I'm eating peppers as well. I also just always like the the shape of like a pepper when you cut it out, like especially like the little top end there. Rustic pieces of bell pepper. Mm-hmm. Artisanal pepper. Um Notice that I've not like been like super thorough about pulling the seeds out of the bell pepper. They're not going to hurt you. They're not poisonous. They're not even spicy. They won't grow a pepper tree in your stomach. Yeah. Uh, who cares? <laughs> Food facts from Benjineering. Yeah. I saw like a professional chef doing a cooking thing and he just like tore into a bell pepper and there are seeds everywhere. And I was like, oh, well, there you go. I mean, if they do it, so can we. <laughs> Maybe you want a tree in your stomach? I mean, power to you. Uh, We're not here to judge. Yeah, but like vegetable seeds are probably not the way to go for that. You could consider just like... Full body augs? Yeah, swallow like an entire chia pet. Lair does not <laughs> endorse you swallowing a chia pet. Next on Dr. Ben, <laughs> malpractice. <laughs> <laughs> Don't swallow a chia pet. How's that for a crap shot? Malpractice chats with Dr. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops, too late, Ben already did. Well, okay. I covered my ass. So let's turn this back on. Go. Cook. Too hot. Mm -hmm. So now, where's my wooden spoon? It's right here. We have a pan with some burned on delicious bits some oil, some sausage leavens, some juices. I'm going to pour other sausage juices back into here before I'm done because these sausages are just oozing delicious goo. Yeah. I'm going to let my pan come to heat. Uh, and then I'm going to add all of this back in. And then Ben is going to stir it around and saute it. And we're not going to add any salt, remember, because these sausages are salty and these tomatoes are salty. Mm -hmm. But if you're using unsalted tomatoes or you, or, you know, you don't, you throw caution to the wind and you need your food very salty, use bouillon. But if you don't have any bouillon, if you wanted, you could add a pinch of salt at this point to help release the water from the vegetables and get them sautéing faster, but I don't really care that much about it. Makes sense. What is... so this is... That's Italian seasoning. Ah, okay. I just... like, I guess I could have bought like a tiny pinch, but I wanted to show it off. Italian seasoning is just to season this. There are things that fresh herbs really elevate. Mm -hmm. For example, we're doing a salad that calls for fresh herbs. This is a lot going on here, so you can cheap out on your Italian seasoning. Italian seasoning is like rosemary, marjoram, and basil, I think. I mean, or, it's like one of the basic like combo seasonings you can get. It's useful just yeah. to have around, and it goes well in all tomato-based sauces. Mm -hmm. Like no oregano? Or, oh, oregano, probably. 
probably oregano and basil and rosemary. Mm -hmm. I'm All back. Right. What are we making in the kitchen? Uh, we are making a sausage stew. By we, I mean Kathleen is making it, and I am learning the ways of the the master chef. All right, Ben. Yes. I would like you to stir that occasionally and okay. just keep an eye on it and if you think it's cooking too fast or it's like everything's burning and sticking mm -hmm. uh, feel free to turn down that sounds good oh i can already get the 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 smell of the onions cooking and it's very nice so why am i doing this in so many steps ben why are we sauteing the uh why are we sauteing the sausage first and when couldn't we just chop up the sausage and add it to the soup? Yeah. Good question. I tried that. I wanted to see if it made a difference. It really does. I think it brings out the flavor of the sausage and it gives the vegetables a better texture. Well, definitely. I mean, just or like... not a better texture. Just the vegetables are... It just, the whole thing seems a bit richer when you're rendering this fat and cooking vegetables in it mm -hmm. uh, rather than just having it sort of ooze out during the cooking process. Mm -hmm. So I've got three cloves of garlic here and I'm smushing them the hell up. You can leave your garlic more intact if you want a, uh, if you want like pieces of garlic, but like, I feel like what we want is just a good garlicky flavor in our soup. So I'm essentially making a bunch of minced garlic. I think three cloves is probably equivalent to maybe a couple teaspoons. It smells so good. Garlic, garlic is definitely like a, a big kitchen smell for me. Yeah, this is probably two teaspoons of garlic, maybe just shy of a tablespoon. Mm -hmm. Ooh, here's a fun trick. If you really need a nice garlic puree, and this might work with our salt. Pro probably not, but you can add a bunch of like coarse salt. Mm -hmm. If you have like kosher salt or something, and then you can work that into the garlic and that sort of breaks it up and turns it into even uh, an even gooier puree than this. Okay. All right, I'm gonna add that. Okay, mix it around. Yep, just cook it in there. The reason you don't add the garlic first mm -hmm. is because garlic has a lot of sugar in it, so it burns easily. Yeah. And you don't want burnt garlic. Mm -hmm. I prepared wet paper towels earlier by drying off my herbs, so now I can rinse my hands. Aha. All right, so now what, ben, what I'm going to do mm -hmm. is while Ben is sauteing those vegetables, I'm going to open up my can of tomatoes. Tomatoes. Wah. Kitchen safety reaching over you. I'm going to talk about how good cans of tomatoes are. Specifically this size of canned tomatoes in this form factor, which is diced. Is this brand good? I mean, I will buy whatever is on sale. I have no brand loyalty when it comes to canned tomatoes because the ingredients are always tomato salt. Yeah, there's, there's, there's only so many ways like you can really make don't tomatoes. Don't spend ex like if organic matters to you, fine, right? But do mm. not spend extra money to like don't buy name brand of this. It is not worth it. Mm -hmm. It's no different. Uh, so uh, I'm sad the garlic went in last. It's because we don't want to burn our garlic and didn't get caramelized a bit, but it will burn in this situation. Yep. It will not caramelize. It will just burn. So uh, anyhow, so canned tomatoes, why are they so good? Well, because they turn like, you can use them to make soups and chilies and uh, you can cook down your own pasta sauce. As long as you have, uh, as long as you have canned tomatoes around, you have a lot of freedom in what you can do with your food and what you can make. Basically, mm -hmm. I always keep like three or four cans in my cupboard uh, because they're great. And I can't get Bija's dumb can opener to work. What are like the go-to things to just like have at all times in your For kitchen? For me? Yeah. Eggs. Okay. Cheese. Uh, canned tomatoes. Wow, yeah, this canned opener sucks ass. <laughs> ah, it doesn't go like how... It goes uh, down from the top. Yeah, yeah Graham there showed me... Graham was... The way Graham showed me was backwards, and I remembered. Um, yeah, because I guess, like, eggs are a pretty key part of, like, your diet in general, hey? Uh, they're really good, cheap protein. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're And you can always feel like a real adult if you're really tired but you need to make dinner for yourself. Mm -hmm. If uh, what you can do is get some, get some, uh, get like beef, some eggs and then put in some like broccoli and goat cheese or something like that and make yourself a very grown up omelet for dinner. Oh yeah. I mean, I think most people enjoy, like I love breakfast for dinner. It's kind of my go-to way to go. 
Uh, yeah, I never feel bad about that. Mm -hmm. I'm actually going to... These are cooking nicely, okay. but I feel like they're cooking at a low temperature and they're not getting any like brownness to them. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm actually going to turn up the heat before right, we move, add... I'm moving to level two. Yeah. <laughs> before we add anything. If I just put everything in video game... Uh, I mean, that's what we do with everything we do, right? We put it into nerd terms. Yes, exactly. Like, we'll play any, we'll play any board game and start relating it to, like, a different magic <laughs> mechanic. And be like, oh, we get to look at the top card and then figure out if we want to put it there or not. Corey's actually had an early version of this. I think it's actually pretty much dialed in. Mm. I made this for you once when I was like, come over to my house, it's hot, have soup. I'm a monster. <laughs> that was like last week. You don't have to like, it wasn't like the before times. Yeah. <laughs> I, Long I, ago. I exist in like two axes, which is what I'm currently panicking about and what I was panicking about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm cutting up my sausage. And as you can see, it's not even remotely close to cooked. So oh, as soon as I'm done. It looks so tasty. As soon as I'm done here. I will be going to wash my hands and uh, use soap and water on this on these cutting boards, right. this cutting board and knife immediately. Uh, but what I'm just doing is I notice I waited a bit to cut it up, which is good because it's miserable handing like handling something that just came out of the pan. Like you can do it, but it, it, your fingers burn. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm cutting into like semi largish pieces, uh, so it's like two small bites. Or one big bite, I mm -hmm. guess, of sausage. But you don't want to cut the sausage too small because this is a cheesy sausage and I don't want all the cheese to leak out. Oh. But even if the cheese does leak out, you know where it goes? Hmm. Into the soup. Yeah. I mean, actually, one of my um, my favorite dishes uh, in soup land that uh, a friend of mine makes um, is just a, uh, a Mexican soup mm. where it's just like, you know, uh, chicken chicken broth, uh, with like rice, and then you just dump in like taco fixings, delicious. Basically into it, and I just like I get I put so much mozzarella in there. It's so good. All right, that's looking a lot better. Those are looking a lot more cooked. Mm -hmm. Should I be letting them like sit a little bit in between I mean, stirs and stuff? Probably. As somebody who's not a sautésman. Yeah, like I typically would be doing both of these steps at once. I'd like dump everything in, stir it for a bit, and then mm -hmm. let it go. Let it go for a bit. Uh, in fact. You could probably let it go for a bit. Well, I don't want to leave until I'm done with my sausage. Um, but I want to have that browned a little bit more. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I can I can definitely leave it. We'll just we'll just wrap. Hey, everybody! It's Ben and Kathleen, and we're cooking the thing for you. Well, actually, not. We're gonna eat this. <laughs> they can't have it. You don't get e to eat it. Even if you know where our moon base is, don't come by. It's just ours. It's our sausage stew. <laughs> I'm not sharing. <laughs> <laughs> all right give that a stir let's see how that looks because there's liquid coming out of the vegetables right mm -hmm. i don't want to overcook them otherwise they'll just disintegrate by the time we start with the soup so yeah. ben add the, add the tomatoes all right tomatoes engage yes no i'm not draining off any of the water because i want to make soup mm -hmm. but i'm not adding any other liquid to this either because you know what vegetables are full of liquid do you know what these sausages are going to seep liquid liquid so we don't need to water our soup down. It'll be very chunky, very hearty. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to add all these sausages. So all right. Watch out. Mm -hmm. ah. Aha, teamwork. Good, good catch. <laughs> I really don't want to get raw sausage on I any of the tables plate. here. Yeah. On anything we're dealing with here. Yeah. All right. Uh, so Ben, give that a stir. Okay. Let it sit. Pop, pop the lid on. All right. And then I'm going to come back uh, with... A clean cutting board and a clean knife mm -hmm. and not dirty meat hands. All right, that's probably great. Okay. Well, I'll be right back. Sounds good. Actually, I should take all this garbage with me. <laughs> Do you want me to just, like, put it in the bowl? Will we need the bowl again? Yes. Okay. But uh, scoop, yeah, just plop the garbage on top. All right. Sick. When we come back, some soup to go with our soup and salad. Oh, baby. Or, or some salad. We're going to make a soup super salad. salad, chat. Bye. Oh, we're not taking a break, are we? Yeah. Hi. I've been left alone in the kitchen. Oh, even Corey. No, wait. Okay, Corey's still here. <laughs> Don't leave me alone in this room. Um, so yeah, I I like really I really enjoy doing these streams um, because cooking has never been a thing. Like a lot of people in chat were like, Ben, you got to work on your knife t uh, technique, and you're absolutely right. 
Um, cooking was just never a big thing for me. I, I actually, uh, for a long time, lived in ho homes that had a lot of roommates and they were the cookie type people. And I am actually more of a cleaning person. Um, I really just enjoy like dishes, doing dishes and stuff like that. It's kind of like my Zen moment. Um, so I always just had like the, um, the, 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 the contract between us that like they would do the cooking. I'd be the cleaning person. They never had to clean like a dish so they could go wild and extravagant and have like seven pans doing a meal. And I'd be fine with like scrubbing them and all that kind of jazz. It was, it was my thing. And it was a, it was a pretty, it was, it was a pretty good uh, arrangement that we had, uh, worked out. But, uh, I think like my go-to favorite thing that uh, I had a roommate that, um, I cooked, uh, when I first moved here, his name is May and he's a lovely human being. Uh, he made this, it was like, I guess it was just like a kimchi beef, but it, it was, it was really, really good. It was done in, in a, in a Thai style. Um, I'm so jealous. Yeah. Oh, May, May is just like, he's such a good cook. See, uh, my old roommate, um, he is, uh, a CrossFit instructor and like he specifically does all this CrossFit and stuff like that so he can eat whatever he wants that is a legitimately it's not so that he can be like healthy and swole or anything like that it's I mean it's a little bit of that it's a bit of that I mean I'm sure that factors so into it a lot but a lot of desk work yeah yeah his his go-to thing though is legitimately just like I just want to be able to eat whatever uh <laughs> whatever I want and so I got to reap the benefits of that I definitely um I definitely gained some weight when I moved to Victoria. <laughs> because, I mean, there's a multiple side of it too, right? Because when I was living in Edmonton prior to moving here, uh, I was a backstage um, technician. And um, so I did like uh, work on like backstage with bands and stuff. Like I worked with uh, Lamb of God, Blink-182, um, those kind of things. Um, and so it was like really physical work. Now I sit at a computer all day and I'm trying to like adjust lifestyle based on that. And, uh, it's, uh, it's interesting. Welcome back. Hello. I'm back mm -hmm. with a clean plate to replace okay. the one we used and a clean cutting board and a clean knife, both of which were being used, uh, when I went in to cut up some, uh, uh no. just one note, dig your microphone out of your apron. Ooh. Both of those were being used by somebody uh -huh. else in the office when I went to get them. So I was going for a while, but. I'm back. All right. Let us. Where'd my bouillon cube go? Um. I ate it. I wonder if it like got oh, caught no, up in I'll the garbage. Oh no! I'll be so sad. I'll be so sad, but it's not the end of the world. I'll just test it and see if we need to add any salt. I think it got caught up in the uh, in the garbage pile that was made. Ugh. Well, rip. Bum bum. Oh, that's fine. We actually have one standing desk at the office. Yeah, Graham has one. Yeah, yeah. So I'm adding a generous pinch of Italian seasoning. And I'm adding that because uh, I think it will go nicely and uh, oh, bring out... It's already looking so good. Look at the colors. But you don't want to overdo it because it's actually like actually fairly strong in flavor. Uh, so you don't want it to overwhelm. And trust me, this soup will have a lot of flavor all on its own. Uh, and after the sausage is a bit more cooked, I'll start tasting the broth to see if I do want to add any salt because it might not even really be necessary, but I might add a pinch and I'm going to add pepper closer to the end so I don't just cook all the peppery flavor out. What kind of boulin do you typically use for uh, this? This would be just like a chicken one or? It's chicken flavored, but mm -hmm. if you can believe it, it's actually uh, McCormick's brand uh, vegetarian chicken bouillon. Yeah. Okay. I think so, that's the one you've, 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 uh, I've been uh, using it for years. Past. I feel like it's probably pretty good and almost indistingu indistinguishable from other bouillon. Mm -hmm. So next let's have a salad to go with our, uh, to go with our soup, shall we? Yeah. This I realized cause I was going to do something else and then I didn't do it at the last second because I didn't have the right tools. And then I was like, well, what am I supposed to do for half an hour? Well, that simmers. I don't want to have awkward chatty time. So, this is a salad that is adapted from somebody else's recipe, but uh, I've made some changes based on affordability and deliciousness. So this is a summer zucchini salad with Ooh. goat cheese. Oh, and I love goat cheese. Watercress and uh, uh, roasted salted pumpkin seeds. Nice. So there, there's a version of this on the line, and I don't remember what the watercress is, but I changed that because I wanted something with a crisp green flavor to cut through the sort of unctuousness of the olive oil that we'll be adding. And watercress, if you want to taste that, Ben. Mm -hmm. Do you like cilantro? I do. 
Oh, then you'll like watercress. And if you don't like cilantro, you'll huh. like watercress because it's got a similar green flavor, but it's not as strong. It's the and it's a little peppery. It, it yeah, it kicks you like a cup like a couple of chews in. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's like crisp and peppery and like bright tasting, so it's good for mixing with an olive oil. Huh. And uh, pumpkin seeds. I don't think Ben's face believes you. No, it's uh. You didn't. You don't generally eat a bunch spice. of watercress by yourself. <laughs> by itself. Usually, you chop it up and put it in. Things. No, I like it. It's got like this weird spice that's kind of making my tongue tingle. So have some pumpkin seeds. Yeah. These are really nice and crunchy, so the uh, texture. Mm hmm And they're rich and they're salty, so they add a little like fattiness, which is good. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, you're getting that from the olive oil, oil too, but it's good. So well, I just recently started adding um, goat cheese and pecans to like oh, all, every salad that I make. Goat now. cheese and pecans, <laughs> or uh, blue cheese and dried cranberries. Also, basically very good. attempting to make salads less super boring. Because I, I still hold true that I get super bored by salads, but it's getting better. Yeah, you just got to make them interesting. So this is some watercress, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to slice up a little bit of watercress, and I'm going to like do ribbons of it, because we don't want tons of that strong watercress flavor. I mean, I, 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 the problem was when you, you, when you buy a bunch of herbs, the way you buy them, you basically are buying a near infinite amount. Because mm -hmm. uh, you're like, I don't need this much. But what am I going to do? Ta-da! Watercress. That is, and so that is chopped up. Green and bright and a little peppery and it's quite nice. And, uh, you know, like English people do watercress sandwiches and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that would be good on a sandwich. But right now it's just going to be adding some flavor, I think, to our uh, rather bland but healthy made ingredient, zucchini. So I have a green zucchini here because I think it would look better than a yellow zucchini mm -hmm. in this recipe. And unlike the last one where I just sort of like did whatever when I chopped it up, this one I'm going to be a little bit more careful with. Because uh, you want sort of thin slices for this recipe. And uh, I think I'll do little half moons. So while I'm chopping, yes. oh, this knife is not as nice as the other one. <laughs> uh, if I was thinking ahead, I would have brought my mandolin from home, and that would make very short work of this. Hmm. I don't know. Ben, how do you feel about zucchini? Uh, <laughs> I was holding it in. You hate it, don't you? I hate zucchini. <laughs> it's because you've but never had good zucchini, Exactly, and that, that's probably what it is. Um, I am not a zucchini fan, but I'm also uh, not a cucumber fan. Right. like that the uh the long the long vegetables as i call them uh are, are really not your friends they're not they're i'm not big on them i mean they can be made good right like when people make like uh zucchini brownies and stuff like that right but i think at that point they're just there for texture mm -hmm. um zucchini actually has a really nice flavor but it's hard to bring out uh it's also cheap and full of fiber so and uh, other veg and other vitamins so zucchini is one of those things as far as like cost versus like caloric impact versus like nutritional density is considered is very good because mm -hmm. zucchini is is not expensive and in fact if you have, know somebody with a garden you'll probably get free zucchini at some point because somebody will try growing it and then say i have yeah, too, I have much, too much damn zucchini yeah. yeah because a little bit goes a long way mm -hmm. like that being said um a lot of vegetables that i don't like when you pickle them I'm all about. Like, I will eat pickled zucchini and cucumber and all that kind of... I mean, I guess it's a pickle. Yeah. If you pickle a cucumber. <laughs> but, but uh, yeah, no, like, I'm, I'm really a big fan of, like, pickling, like, everything. I mean, I feel like what isn't improved by a good salt bath. Yeah, exactly. Um, but, no, like, there there is no food that I, like, specifically, like, super will not eat if someone puts in front of me because I'm very against... Uh, food wasting as was seen in uh, Graham's last uh, uh, the vlog of him and I going to, to Vegas oh where you just deep throw the cheesecake yeah <laughs> wow. I like I know that people like people do that at buffets like that's just a buffet people will like be like oh there's so much good food but I'm so full well I guess I can go get one plate and they'll eat like two things off the plate and go all right I'm done 
Um, well, my eyes are always bigger than my stomach when I go to a buffet because I'm mm -hmm. like, I want to try that, I want to try that, I want to try that. And then well, rapidly, I'm like, I'm done. Yeah, like in Vegas where everything is like, that, that was a really taste. I'm, I'm sure there are not great buffets, but that was a really good one. But, uh, so, I mean, I've, I've always, I, I was definitely the kid that uh, grew up with the whole, like, you don't get to leave the table oh. until you finish. And uh, That gives people food complexes, I think. Oh, big time. Life. It's a, not a way to raise your child. No. <laughs> but, I mean, I think, I think the, the, the proper ways of parenting are, like, an ever-evolving sort of a thing. That's true. Um, I neat. successfully reminded Penelope that she liked French fries last night. Oh yeah, because she didn't want to eat them mm -hmm. after she said she wanted French fries. Because we're out for dinner. <laughs> like, no, you like these things. And I was remember? Like, okay, here's the deal. Mm -hmm. This is a French fry that you asked for and I ordered, so then so it's being paid for already. It is cool and I've blown on it, and I have tasted it and it is very delicious. If you just have to have one bite, and if you don't want to have any more after that, that's fine. I'll get you different dinner at home, but you do have to have one bite. And then Penelope went, and I was like, thank you. Would you like to have another bite? Yes. Uh, <laughs> and I was like, ah, owned toddler. <laughs> there you go, out, outbrained. <laughs> well, I mean, here's the thing. Just try one bite of this thing you think is delicious. But it has taken me probably literally years to earn that trust by when she says, no, I don't want any more. I don't try to coerce her into having any more. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was a noticeable thing I saw in, in uh, her growing up was like, she definitely learned to say no. Yeah, yeah. And stuff like that. Like, people would be like, you want to get, like, go give Ben a hug or, or like, you know, give, give like, Adam a high five give or something like that. Give terrifying not daddy a yeah, hug. And, yeah, right? And then she'd be like, no. And I was like, okay, I respect your bodily autonomy. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, like, and so that was the thing. So I, I grew to, like, regardless of if I enjoyed the food, I would always eat it. You know, it was just an upbringing. Right. But I think that was, like, yeah, to, to my father's credit, he was doing the single dad thing with two boys. Whoa. And uh, he, did a, he did a pretty damn good job. Cool. You know what? I'm just going to throw the whole amount in there. Yeah, do it. Fill this zucchini salad with zucchini. How old is Penelope now? She's almost three. Well, she's like two and three quarters. Yeah. I mean, how far is November? Uh, November's still quite a ways away. Yeah. We announced Desert Bus today. I know. And I'm I so went, proud of oh, us. Oh God. <laughs> but I've never been the person who gets like really freaked out by Desert Bus. Oh, you just haven't been doing it long enough. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm also not on like the committee either, right? I my my week starts. Like I, my my stress starts like two weeks out from it. Right. But seriously, it sneaks up every year. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah, absolutely. All right, so now I have zucchini and uh, watercress, and I'm adding olive oil. Yeah. I, why are you adding so much olive oil, Kathleen? It's not actually that much olive oil. And this is some lovely olive oil from France that we got sent in mail time. So how cool is that? Mm -hmm. This is gonna be the highest quality, nicest olive oil. I'm adding enough to generously coat. And olive oil is delicious and adds flavor, but there's not like a pool of olive oil at the bottom or anything like that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, now I'm gonna add a butt ton of salt because salt's delicious, and but not too much salt because my pumpkin seeds are salty. Makes everything tasty. So we have our base, which is zucchini, mm -hmm. and we have some crisp green, which is our uh, watercress, mm -hmm. and we have our rich, which is our uh, pumpkin seeds, and I'm adding a lot because they're good for you, and they're, this was a dollar at an expensive supermarket, so if you go to, like, a bulk barn or something, it'll be even cheaper. Mm -hmm. uh, but what, Kathleen, is your acidic balance on this? Oh, good question. That's goat cheese, because goat cheese is delicious. <laughs> ben, how do you feel about crumbling goat cheese? I love goat cheese. I am, I am a big cheese person, though. Alright, ooh, this is very soft, because mm -hmm. I have I let, took it out of the fridge. Could you crumble in, like, half a log just like do that little like blah, 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 blah. like take it out of the package and like get little bits and sort of crumble it in sure cool i'm gonna check on this oh that smells delicious and also it's probably too hot Ooh, this is very that is very yep. warm goat cheese yep do your do what you can all right So, look at all this liquid! 
So, see, this is why I was like, I don't need to add anything else. It looks all, it looks quite dry now, but before long it will be very, there will be lots of liquid in there. Mm, I do want to add some salt, though. Mm -hmm. Not bouillon cube. I'm sad. The best way to do it is to pinch and flick. Then I'm going to give it a good stir anyhow, so... Yeah, it's probably just going to all sort of gel with it, oh. to be honest. You only need to add, like, half the log, so it's probably... It's, you don't need to do all of that. All right. We'll have leftover goat cheese in the office. A.K. Okay, we'll have no goat cheese in the office in a couple of days, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've actually started bringing salads to work. I can top some goat cheese on. Hell yeah. Huh. I've got a bunch at home. Kathleen, opinion on bouillon cubes versus paste? None, because the bouillon I like does not come in paste, but if it did, I would buy it. So does that mean you prefer paste? Uh, no, I would buy it to try it. Ah, uh, gotcha. Uh, I have no opinion whatsoever. I'm sure it's fine. The problem is you can't buy less than like $11 worth of bouillon paste, which yeah. means it's a big commitment if, it's, if you don't like it. Because you have bouillon for essentially a century afterwards. Mm -hmm. Mm, that's nice. But still. Cheesy hands. I'm going to go wash my cheesy hands. By wash, I mean lift them off and then wash. Delicious. Ah, bum. I need one more clean fork. But our salad is done. So we can have a bit of a mukbang while we're waiting for that, while we're waiting for our soup to finish cooking. Originally I was going to do rice cooker cheesecake, but uh, uh, I uh, decided against it the last second because I didn't really have uh, access to the right kind of rice cooker. All right, Ben, do you want to do a mukbang? Uh-huh. That social eating? Oh, is that what they're called? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Delicious. Oh, this looks tasty. I like this salad. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Goat cheese down. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm not going to waste it. I'll put that on my plate. We can and try it and see. And we, the zucchini should be like nice and crispy, but also mostly buried by the fact that there is incre that it, there's an incredible amount of other stuff in here. <laughs> if you're doing this at home and you want to impress somebody, the important thing to do is that you should definitely taste before plating because maybe I need to add a bit more salt or oh, and I didn't add pepper, so I'll just do fresh pepper on top and it'll be very exciting looking, mm -hmm. like at a restaurant. Get on my plate. Notice how much I gave you and how much I gave myself because I com I'm convinced I'll like the salad because I like zucchini. I'm excited. Fresh pepper, sir. Yes, please. All right. You don't need to go overboard on the pepper though because the uh, other stuff is peppery. Uh, no, no. Uh, oh. Here, use this fork. All right. I'll use one of the forks that I tossed the salad with. Sounds good. I forgot to get another fork when I went to wash stuff. <laughs> Cheers. Ding. That's really good. Yeah. It's not like a taste explosion. No. You can eat a lot of it. No. I mean, the goat cheese, I think, needs to be a little crumblier. Yeah. But I love goat cheese. So, also... The zucchini doesn't actually have that much of a taste. No. It's more of a showcase for the pumpkin seeds and the goat cheese. Yeah. It's just kind of lightly sweet, actually. Yeah. It's good. It's crisp and refreshing. This is this is a super light salad. Mm-hmm. Mmm. 
Wait, raw zucchini? What the fuck? You don't have to cook zucchini. It just... It's fine. You saw me eat a raw mushroom earlier, too. Raw mushroom is fine. Mmm. So, yeah. I feel like this is the kind of thing you can eat a lot of mm -hmm. and not really feel all that bad about it. No. And you can, and it's very light, so you can put it with, like, a steak or something like that. Honestly, anytime I'm not just, like, crunching down on pizza or something like that, I'm pretty proud of myself. <laughs> it's so easy to just order pizza or, like, eat out all the time. It is. Um, and uh, especially, like, in our line of work, where we're just, like, doing things all the time. And tired. Yeah. That's why I'm glad that this is a uh, cooking stream, because it's, like, after this stream is done. I gotta go home and street. <laughs> and it never stops. We all, it's, it's, I mean, it's the exact same I imagine for you whenever you're doing like a Brave New Faves after like a AFK or on a Saturday or something like that. When we went straight from Brave New Faves, or went straight from Dice Friends, four hour, our four hour Dice Friends special, into Brave New Faves, I was like, I'm very tired. Mm hmm. I'm the end of it. When did Loading Ready Run become a cooking show? We do it every once in a while. Mm hmm. I mean, it's all part of the, uh, the DIY. Mm. I hope you enjoy that sensuous AS ASMR. But, like, I feel like that's just, like, nice and lightly green, and the watercress isn't, like, overwhelming, like, when you ate it, but you get, a, you get it once in a while, and yeah, it's nice and fresh. Yeah, yeah, the, um, taking the bite of just the leaf... Was, was a lot. Was a lot. But it's nice in this. So, yeah. Also, yeah, the pumpkin seeds are really good because they're crunchy. Mm -hmm. So the whole thing is kind of crunchy. Yeah. So I recommend it. And then, over here we have soup, which is still cooking and doing its thing. Oh, that looks so good. So, mm. somebody said something about the texture of zucchini. Uh, raw zucchini just has, like, sort of a weirdly generically vegetable fiber texture. It does, yeah. It's not too hard, it's not too soft, it doesn't go... <sighs> Right, like when this you is eat not it. a yeah. This isn't really a super. The thing that makes it crunchy is the the pumpkin seeds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The zucchini is just there. Yeah, but it's 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 got, it's got a firmness to it, mm -hmm. right? Think yeah, of, yeah. Like it's not bad. Uh, uh, cooked zucchini is really mushy, and there's not really much you can do about that. But eventually, it becomes really good mm -hmm. once it cooks down enough. Uh, so for anybody who's just coming in, what do we got going on? Oh over yeah, there? for anybody who's just coming in, we're making a sausage soup. And we've got a zucchini and goat cheese and pumpkin seed salad. Mm -hmm. Or I guess it's zucchini, goat cheese, pumpkin seeds, and watercress, since I listed most of the ingredients. Yeah. Raw zucchini is like a dense sponge, says Hosk. Yeah, I can see it. It's a very dense sponge. Mm -hmm. Like a, one that's been through like the hydraulic the hydraulic press channel. Yeah. Huh. Well, I mean, like you, th you put on a decent amount of oil, like yeah. olive oil, in there, and it does not taste like oily. No. No, and I feel like a bit bad because I just, I sort of, like, have a good idea about how much olive oil a zucchini is going to hold. Mm -hmm. So you notice, like, there is a slick, there is oil on the bowl. You mm -hmm. can see that it's shiny, but there's no pool of olive oil. You could do the top down, oil. probably shot on it. Yeah. Right? Like, it's... Uh, wait, move, Ben. Or is that your shadow? Who's... No, that's the bull oh, shadow. Oh, that's the bull shadow. You can see that there is the glisten of oil there, but there's not a pool of oil. Mm -hmm. So you want to get a good coating, so, because that is what's going to stick your pumpkin seeds to your zucchini. But you do not want them to be swimming in oil. Mm -hmm. It's a hard... Oh my god! I can tell you guys while we're waiting for this to cook about the worst food I've ever had. Okay. I was in a small town in the interior mm -hmm. uh, getting my dad from his bike trip. And he right. took me out for dinner. Yeah. And they said... Oh, this trip got... This was an interesting trip, but it, I'm, I didn't hear about this part of the story. It was just the worst... It was just like... so. And they said, we're gonna... We do... Uh, a couscous salad, except the couscous is cauliflower. Okay. And I went, oh, just cauliflower? And they went, yeah. And I went, oh, I'm very excited by this. Uh -huh. uh, but what it was, was uh, just raw cauliflower that had not been steamed or cooked in any way and then uh -oh. cooled. Uh, and with just tons of olive oil poured onto it. Like, so it was like, pool, like a pool of olive oil at the bottom of my plate. And I'm like, I like fat as much as the next person, but no. Yeah, that's a lot. It was so greasy. And with like, some very nice cherry tomatoes in it, and a chicken breast that had been cooked to with an inch of its life. It was... It was dry, or was it just, like, very well done? It was so dry. Yeah. It was so... It, it, it was almost evaporated. 
Uh, and they had just put like steak seasoning on top of it, so it, like it was alternatingly flavorless and dry, but incredibly salty. Oh, good. Uh, so I was like, nothing about this. You said this was a chicken breast. Did it breast? bounce? Yeah, it was a chicken breast. It had been so badly prepared. I, I'm sure it would have bounced had I thrown it on the sidewalk, but I was too hungry to care, so I muscled through as much of the salad as I could and uh, did and ate the chicken breast because the chicken. Oh, to within an inch of its life. Well, I, until it almost caught fire, we'll mm -hmm. say. It was cooked until it was nearly immolated in the flames of, of Mordor. Mm -hmm. Of Mount Doom. <laughs> within an inch of its life sounds like it could still get upon up. Upon it and say, <laughs> you shall be over seasoned and salty and dry. <laughs> and so she came by, I was like, how's your food? And I'm like, <laughs> like, like I chicken. feel like chicken breast is one of those things. Chicken breast also sometimes falls into the category of boring food me right like chicken breast is the the go-to like i'm eating it healthy and like you you see the person that has like four sli four like stalks of asparagus and like a chicken breast mm -hmm. beside it kind of a thing and i go man your food put me to sleep um and then you taught me the magic of chicken thighs which is like the way to go i heard though because i've been getting like boneless skinless thighs when i go to yeah uh mark and on yates mm -hmm. um i heard even if like you plan on deboning it, you should get it with the bone because that's like where the flavor and stuff is at. Yeah, but it makes it take a lot longer to cook. Yeah. And uh, I'm bad at deboning chicken thighs, and that adds a lot of time to my cooking. Mm -hmm. So I'm not prepared to do that. Yeah, for like because I like to have my food cooked in an hour, and adding a deboning step if you're not good at it, which and I'll never get better if I don't practice. But eh, uh, adds like a long time. It's mm -hmm. hard to debone a chicken thigh; they're slippery. Um, if you do want to use chicken breast, though, because everybody's caught on to chicken thighs, they're the same price as breasts now. They used to yeah. be way cheap, and now breasts are the ones that go on sale. All yeah. right. Query related to chicken breasts. Have you tried brining them? No. I was about to say, you can brine them, or you can poach them. You can poach your chicken breasts, which is where you get, like, a pan with a lid on top, and you cook them in a couple inches of water. Mm -hmm. Or uh, do both. Oh, God, you could do both. You could brine them and then poach them. That would be very good, I think. Mm. If you've got a, like, brining's not hard. You can just make a brine solution the night before and throw your chicken breast in it, and they can brine for, like, 24 hours or, you know, 20 hours or something like that, and uh, they'll be much better for it. It's also good for dry pork. Ooh. Like, if you get, like, you know, they sometimes at Costco have, like, those pork loins. It's just, like, a big strip of, like, very lean pork on sale, and you're like, this is very cheap but very dry protein. Mm -hmm. Uh so you can brine those and they'll turn out a lot better. People yeah. in the chat are also mentioning sous vide but the issue there is they're very time sensitive and you get really rubbery chicken if you leave it in too long. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, like, if you're, if you're, like, if you have to cook chicken and you're worried about it not turning out well, number one easiest is brine them first, but if you're on a time crunch, uh, you can poach them, which sounds gross, but they're great. Yeah. I mean, for, 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 for my lifestyle, um, I just, if I'm going to do something like, if I want to do something extra, it's typically I'll just slow cook everything. Um, and it's just like, especially too, it, it's really nice because you'll, I'll do like so much that I'll just have like meals for the rest of the week and stuff out of whatever I've, uh, whatever I've slow cooked. Exactly. All right. Um, I think our soup is done. <gasps> I'm so excited. It looks and smells amazing. It's not It's not complicated to make. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Off. There. So it's very straightforward soup. It's going to be really hot, Ben. Okay. Is this my dinner? It is. There you go. Thank you very much. Corey, do you want some soup? Yes, please. Do you want me to bring it to you while you're running the board, or do you yes, just want to please. just set it to wide and come over here? I can just leave it in wide. Yeah. Okay. I'll mic up. People can hear my mouth noises, too. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe how cheap lamb shanks are. They're freaking amazing, says Munchlax regrets nothing. Oh, wow. Have you cooked with a lot of lamb before? It's not cheap here. No. All right. Meat on the island in general. Is quite expensive. Whenever I leave the island, I try and always get steak. Um, yeah. Because BC beef is fine. Yeah. And that's it. Like it's not. It's not bad. And this isn't like some sort of like I'm from Alberta where we do beef the best or anything like that. Um, but 
I, 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 I will say that when you go and have beef that is off island and stuff like that, it is quite noticeable, especially uh, in a place in the interior where, you know, having cattle and stuff like that is a lot more sustainable. Uh, yeah, northern BC, like Peace Country does good beef, but it's basically Alberta up there. Mm -hmm. So, like, yeah, as far as like the climate and stuff. When I worked in Chetwind, I always had really, really good beef, and it was really cheap. Mm -hmm. So I ate a lot of beef. I'm going to throw on some quiet music while we're eating. Ooh. Hell yeah. A-plus for Alberta beef. Yeah, and I mean, um, I actually am going to go back for... I haven't actually been back to Edmonton since I moved here, and I've been here for almost two and a half years now. Um, wow, Edmonton burn. Although, like, you were very busy. I, I, I it, it's that too, and um, I mean, like, really, the only people that I've got there um, is like family and stuff like that. And also, you have a horrible boss who would never let you take the time off. Yeah. All, She's such all a she beat. ever does is like, why are you not in the Beat room? me. <laughs> Ta-da! Wait, do we have enough spoons? Yes. Yes. Yeah, sweet. <gasps> no, I brought out three spoons. Okay. I'm just gonna warm my hands on this right That's now. It's very hot. It's super hot. Not everybody has an asbestos mouth like mm -hmm. I do. No, That's, like I, yeah, I have no ill will to, to Edmonton. I I like living here more. Edmonton is a totally fine place to live. I also haven't seen it since uh, they did like the ice district. And oh gosh, like that, yeah. but yeah, it's things have changed. Have you been like, if you haven't been downtown in like the last two years, no. it's just like a different place. Is it okay? I'm like I'm I'm, I'm gonna try and actually go down for um, Thanksgiving. It's like my, a my Canadian usual, Thanksgiving. My usual hang is like White Ave, so I don't even go downtown. Yeah, yeah. Even if I go to Edmonton, it's not to downtown, and then I see it, and I'm like, where am I? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I spent most of my time on White Ave, too. Granted, I lived on White Ave, so. This is good, but if you cooked it for another, like, 40 minutes, it would be amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I didn't want to have us sit here and, like, kill time for 40 minutes. I was like, this technically meets all the thresholds of cooked. Mm -hmm. and, but the longer you can cook this, the better. Should you put this together in a slow cooker? No. I'll tell you why. Pressure cooker. Possibly. I don't own one, so I haven't tested it. Oh. Uh, slow cookers don't um, do a good job at getting hot enough to concentrate the flavor. So I left the lid on this for the first little bit just to make sure everything would cook really nicely. And I took the lid off and left it, let it to bubble and simmer and stuff. But, but slow cookers keep all the liquid inside, and so nothing ever condenses and everything ends up watery. I have never made something in a slow cooker that like I felt had the rich flavor that you could get on a stovetop. Definitely. Uh, so yeah, like I like slow cookers for various things, but uh, I think this is improved by being like rich and having like like the cheese goo in mm -hmm. the broth and kind of like got I all think these vegetable flavors. The slow cooker's got its specific uses and specific reasons why you would use it. Um, I like it. For if I'm gonna go? make like pulled pork or something. Should I dump some feta in here? Uh, it's not feta, it's goat cheese, but you oh. can dump goat cheese in there. I was want. thinking this would yeah. taste really good with like a cheese kind of thing going on in it. This is super good. Mm -hmm. Kathleen. It's not the best thing I've ever made because I think this needs to cook for longer. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to stand here and watch this pot boil for yeah. another 40 minutes. So. If anybody was cooking along with us, by yeah. the way, and whatnot. Who are you? Um, how how did yours turn out? I'd be actually I'd be curious. Send me photos. Mm hmm. Or, or maybe sour cream. maybe if you weren't cooking it right now, but you plan on cooking it, um, it'd be cool to see what you what you got. Yeah, let it cook longer than I did though. Yeah, the zucchini needs a little more time. I kind of like that the zucchini is a little crunchy. But you know what? When we when it gets reheated up the next day for lunch, because well, it's gonna be my lunch tomorrow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, or I guess anybody's lunch, since Loading Ready Run brought these ingredients today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's free game. Office food. Mm. I made taco salad, says uh, Miss Lethal. Nice. Well, I guess that's about it, really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was fast. Yeah, yeah. for salad. I, I, I anticipated that this Corey, was going to be like a full three hours. Straight. No. Do you want any? I know that some raw stuff gives you problems, and mm -hmm. I wasn't sure about raw zucchini. Uh, I don't, well, zucchini is great. Squash is fine. Oh, okay. Uh, the pumpkin seeds might be a little. No, they are roasted. roasted so they're, they're, they're not raw. Yeah. Hmm. But I, I wanted to double check for that one. Mm -hmm. Pulled pork is also good if you don't have the inclination to babysit a smoker all day. Yeah. Like, um, I, I'll typically just make pulled pork that way as well. Or, or like if you go to Costco and sometimes they have beef roast for really cheap. Yeah. Mm. A pulled beef. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -mm -mm. Mm. This was great. I'm really glad that we did this. Um, do we want to do subs and stuff like that? Sure. Yeah. Sure, let's do subs while we're reading. Yeah. Um, we can also talk about what's going on for the rest of the week. Mm -hmm. um, starting with uh, tomorrow in the morning, what are you guys playing? Uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, we're it's playing no more heavy, Heaven Will Be Mine, because oh, the game is, lasted this, more than a week. This is the, the mech dating yeah. game, right? Yeah, this seems super cool. Uh, so far, there's been less mech dating than I want and more long monologues. Uh, that sounds very anime. That, to be fair, that it's does very sound, anime. It sounds very mech anime. Do they not like monologue like all the damn time in those ones? I don't actually watch a lot of mech anime. There's a lot of talking in this. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it yet. I have to play more. Like I'm not bored, so mm -hmm. that's something. But there's I'm a lot of talking. Ready with the uh, subs, but the upcoming streams thing is not working. Okay. Oh. Well, I mean, well, we can we'll just, just go through Friday. Yeah. Then. So after um, now kiss, it's uh, the crap shoot. Yeah. What do you guys? Uh, is it a writing or? A... I believe it's a film two edit one. Nice. So that will be hella fun. Um, should also mention uh, this was this was actually talked about uh, on the IRL stream. James and I did. Um, one of the things that we're trying to look at is trying to do like a, a mobile. Oh yeah. Like, where we can take like the crap shoot on the road. I guess is what is what James was saying. Oh, that would be nice. Um, so we can do like more um, location shooting, but also still do it as the crap shoot. Ooh, that could be fun. Yeah. So. Uh, and then after that, we have a really fun Highlander thing. This sounds super cool. Explain this, Ben. Uh, okay, so I'm not a part of this one, but. Uh, oh, I thought you were. I am. No. Sorry. No, Corey, Corey is. is. Corey is a part yes. of it. You probably have more information than I do about this. So it is the crew from North 100. Each in. Uh, it, developing their own Canlander deck, Canadian mm -hmm. Highlander, and we will each, the four players that have been paired up with them, will have one hour to prepare with the decks and learn how they work. So while we're playing against each other, they will be in another studio giving commentary. Wow. About our poor plays. Mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm excited. So yeah, it's basically they're going to teach a bunch of people to play Highlander and and then coach them mm -hmm. to victory anime style. Yeah. Yeah. So the decks will be made by, I believe, Serge, Alex, Liam, and Jeremy. And it's me, Ian, Paul, and Graham playing. Yes. Ooh. Yeah. We almost never see Paul playing Magic. Expect lots of tight plays. Yeah. Paul Paul, Paul, Paul playing Magic is going to be really, really cool. The main thing that they, we, we talked about when we were uh, discussing the idea for this stream was uh, we wanted people who knew how to play Magic uh, but hadn't played uh, Highlander before, so it's why you won't, mm. for example, have like Beach playing it, because like Beach knows how to play Magic, but he still has like some, you know, difficulties when it comes to like certain aspects of the rules. So this was like a, we have people who know how to play Magic, they just never played something at probably the power right. level that is Highlander. So uh, yeah. So I'm excited for that. And then on Saturday, probably very very relevant to many people. Loading Ready Live! It's back! We haven't done one in a little while. <laughs> we, we put it on a hiatus because of many things happening. Mm -hmm. But Loading Ready Live is back. We've got a brand new Commodore Hustle to go in that that I'm working on the script for. Mm -hmm. um, should I give a hint about the pre-record? Uh, there is a pre-record yeah. and that it's being, done being edited. Is it done being edited? Yeah. Oh, awesome. Yeah, it's super cool. Um, you're going to want to turn in for that. It might involve a certain boy who... Does Minecraft that loops the character. That likes coffee. Yeah, that likes coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. So uh, that will definitely have some good segments for you. And then we'll talk about the rest of the stuff coming up on the Loading Ready Run Entertainment Network mm -hmm. later. Because we don't have the thing. And I don't want to do days and days and stuff with an overlay. All right, it is time for the subbing. Begin the subbing. I want to steal a little bit more of that sausage because it's super tasty. Mm. Here we go. Uh, Lizardman175 for 13 months. Welcome back, friend. Thank Yay. you so much. And Omniver Ipizik is a brand new subscriber. Thank you. Omniver Ipizik. IHBar14 saying, woo, time for dinner with Lara. Hope your dinner's going well. It's Granite Fish, cooking with Bear and the Big Blue Apron. Sure. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. I like this combo name. Uh, Kiwi Jelly for 14 months saying, I'm back, non gender specific binges. What you making? Awesome. Munch Lax regrets nothing for eight months, says one day I'll work out how to schedule this for now, kiss. Until then, hooray, TTSF. Corey, do you want in on this? 
It's Old Man Johnson MB for 25 months. Cooking with Kathleen is always a blast. Well done, team. And it's Brixen for 17 months. Woo! And Karua Fox is a brand new subscriber. Welcome to the channel, friend. Oh my gosh, it's your friend Arastes for 58 months says just changing to night shift for the weekend. Good get getting a good recipe idea to run. Chance for 34 months. Welcome back. And Zaxus EMK for six months saying six months the sausage anniversary. <laughs> Two flower for 60 months says 60 months of deliciousness all solar. Quilario for 12 months. Happy anniversary. And Sir Octopus for 22 months saying, yay, cooking streams. Thanks for the inspiration. Oh, boy. And thanks for 592 bits from Seronius1982 type 1 E block, Aquinas 0, and hey, Lucky Annie. Hooray. The bits. So I hope everybody had a good time. I hope you enjoyed me and Ben having uh, a chat. This was great. Chat. I really enjoy just like being your kitchen helper. I, these kind of thank things. you, Ben. You're a great helper. You're really, <laughs> you're, you're, it's really nice and you're fun to talk to. I just want to learn. That's all, man. Yeah, man. I was and talking about when you were, when you were out washing the, uh, what, I think like washing your hands and also yeah. like getting rid of this stuff, um, that for the longest time I was always like, I never did the cooking. I was always the person who liked to be the dishwasher. And my right. like roommates and stuff were like, were like, I will make anything for you if I never have to touch a dish. And I'm like, hell yeah, I'll live that life. Um, and now I'm really enjoying like learning the other side of it, so. The cooking is fun. I find it creatively rewarding. Mm -hmm. uh, and I like doing things. Have I, have, I, have I swung your palate a little bit on zucchini prepared the right way? Yes. Most vegetables are gross because they're usually poorly prepared. That's mm -hmm. why lots of people hate cauliflower because they've only ever had like boiled cauliflower. Yeah. Which is fucking foul. Yeah. And I like yeah. cauliflower. My Yeah, my entire growing up of like cauliflower and also broccoli, which I hated for the longest time, was just like, you know, pot, steam, oh. like colander kind of thing what? in there. And that, was, that was all I ever knew. No wonder you hate broccoli because mm. that's just really gross. You know yeah. how you cook broccoli? You take a cookie sheet and you put some tin foil on it because then you don't have to do as much cleanup later. Mm -hmm. And you take your raw broccoli and you put olive oil all over it, and then you sprinkle garlic salt all over it, and you toss it up, and then you bake it at 375 mm -hmm. for like 15 minutes, and then you flip it, and then you bake it at 375 for another 10 to 15 minutes until it's like crispy to your liking. Yeah. It's amazing. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in. This was super, super great, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys.